am very pleased and honored to have uh, the Cancer Center of Santa Barbara come here into my home and to talk, to have me talk about some of the paintings which I conceived of while uh, being treated at the Cancer Center. I had a brain tumor and it occupied my uh, mind immensely. This is the first painting I came up with and it shows what I just drew four blood lines. Then I thought, well, this looks like the coast of Santa Barbara. And then I made these blood lines into palm trees. And then my left hand, I was paralyzed after the operation. Um, my left hand made these lines here, resembling a, a dinosaur. And then I made this triangle here behind the palm trees. That means in the ocean. And this resembles that of a shark. So then my left hand made these dots here and dots there. And by looking at this at the end, I said, oh, the shark has lost its teeth. So I am going to be healed from the brain cancer, leoblastoma. And I was so convinced of this going to happen that it did indeed happen. I never had the, I had two years of uh, Timota treatment and Avastin treatment and, and from then on all the uh, MRIs turned out clean. So uh, this was a precursor and a reinforcer of my fervent belief that I would be cured. Uh, and, and this was I, your, your first one? My first one. Then the fish here, representing myself, uh, is going through the ordeal of having to fight its, uh, his way through Timoda and Avatta. And they painted the Timoda pills that big, and he had to eat them all. And was cured or was able to get rid of the tumor into the sense that it is no longer detectable and is now asleep. So those are the chemo drugs yes, that you're chemo. swimming through. Yes, absolutely. I was then a Timota and I was very happy to conceive of these very positive, happy colors, mm -hmm. uh, which express my positive feeling towards conquering the disease of leoblastoma stage four. And it has been proven to be correct. So I am very happy about it. This is a painting which made me aware of that I'm on this journey through life, not alone. It's difficult, but I'm not alone, and this makes it much, much easier. What does it mean to be not alone? I put a strongly planted tree, like a, a boot, in onto the ground, and then have some lines going into the distance. And the title of this was No Matter Where I Go, the Holy Spirit will protect me and guide me. And this has been true for the remainder of the last three years that I don't feel alone anymore. I, besides having the support of 
my dear wife Dodi, all the good friends from the cancer support center, including Lisa. So and what, Michael, tell me a little bit more about how this image helps you not feel alone. Uh, because I walk away into the future and I cannot really see the future. But I'm not afraid that there is some hidden risks, hidden dangers. Mm. It's, uh, it's uh, my belief and my faith has helped me to maintain this feeling of safety in my journey. Mm -hmm. I will like this one as well. But I changed the colors, and I like colors which are bright, mm -hmm. positive, not somber or sinister. This mm -hmm. is all positive. And you have some circles in there, too. At the yes. bottom, what there's kind of yes, and uh, these are all they are not necessarily uh, linked to any uh, symbology, but it is uh, uh, an element of ornamentalization or uh, background which I wanted to have to finalize the picture, not taking it away from the strong strength of this big tree. Of the trunk? The trunk painted in form of a wood, which of course represents my firmly rooted in the ground. Yep. paintings of a dog, the model of which was our beloved Cody, Macy. And uh, so I found them, uh, he's such a curious dog, and uh, uh, so I painted them as whimsically as I could. Some more whimsical than the others, but in different colors. And but yet matching them mm -hmm. in some fashion. I was very happy here that this green dog in the center of mm -hmm. this painting almost likes, looks like an oil painting. Mm -hmm. I was being able to develop such a richness in the paint. And it's watercolor, it's, right? They're all watercolors, yeah. yeah. And the background, Actually, uh, will you, which you will see in one of the subsequent paintings, are uh, uh, bricks through which uh, the dog crashed and came out unscathed, which again symbolizes my having conquered the mm. GBN cancer and will be alive. So that's very good. I am very happy with this. I abbreviated last name. And at school, they called me Osho, O-R-C-H-O. And of course, here they called me Michael in this country, <laughs> which I like very much. But I, there are so many Michaels around. So I thought, well, let's have my nom de plus uh, be Ocho, uh, adding the W after the O, which is still an abbreviation of Ochowski. And I like this very much, and it's easy to write. Mm -hmm. And since I am, as I said earlier, only painting with my left hand, uh, which and clumsily at, at that, uh, this was the easiest way of getting to put uh, some letters down. Well, let's start with this one in the center. This is probably the most uh, realistic painting I found in my mind.
to have a brown looking corgi be in front of uh, light green and dark mm -hmm. background. But I didn't give him any pupils. <laughs> I already <laughs> other dogs had pupils. I thought he doesn't need any pupils. He is already lively enough. Yes, yes. And so the other two are just supplements of this dog, one in the middle. However, this one on the far right is one of the dog's uh, paintings which I consider significant. It's, uh, as one can see, a dark blue dog with human eyes, but has a little blemish on the right cheek, which was caused by my pulling the brush away, and I didn't have the strength to lift it up, so I made a little blemish on this, and I left it there. And later on, I found out that this is actually the scar which I have on my right cheek. Then, uh, here we have this dog being surrounded by a fireball in pink. Then, and he crashed with his fi fireball in pink through the red brick wall, like in an earlier painting, mm -hmm. and he again came out unscathed. Mm -hmm. So, this was a confirmation of my strong belief that I had overcome the cancer. Mm -hmm. This is one of the paintings I most cherish and have been, uh, been asked about what it means and I can never tired of uh, describing what what it means to me. It means to me perseverance and that what I believe is the right uh, following of the medical knowledge available to treat this cancer as well as the belief in the Holy Spirit guiding me in doing the right things at the right time. And this is the expression of this. I think it's when my good friend Lisa working in the cancer center saw the paintings of the dogs, she was very intrigued. Michael, I have a dog too. I know you do. By the name of Bella. And let's paint her. So I was very enthusiastic about it and I painted these four paintings which you will see now in rapid succession. This is, I don't know, number one or two, or it was probably number one, you know. I don't know which, I can't remember which order they, they went in. So there's this I one. Don't know. But they are all painted in early 2011. And then so this two, year. Oh, you can't actually see that, Michael. You can't. Yeah, no, it's okay. This is good, so. Would yeah, you? no, this is good. Here we have three more versions of this, all in the same color pattern, more or less, but still different poses, different reflective uh, uh, stances of the dog dogs do think. And so I am very happy about it. And of course, I was very happy and the lucky recipient of these dog paintings, namely Lisa, said, oh, they're glorious. They are glorious. And the eyes, the intense look, as she looks up, you, up at you like, hello, are you, are you talking to me? What are you going to do? Are you going to throw the frisbee? Are you going to play the ball? She just, that's so it, Bella. It was, I think I had the most fun.
painting this one uh -huh. uh, because it was able to maintain a concerted color scheme rather than going into a salmon, here or brown or yellow. Uh -huh. Here we have more greenish, bluish colors. Uh -huh. And this is what I like. Uh -huh. it's the colors are more seasonesque, uh -huh. uh, which as a painter whose color schemes I greatly admire. Okay. See. Yeah. No, these are these are great. You you definitely have a gift of facial expression of dogs and really being able to capture it. I mean, honestly, it's they're great. Yeah, they're great. I love them. Okay. okay, Bella, go on over by Michael so you can, he can be you can be in the video. Go on. Go say come, hi. Come. Go say come hi to Michael. Say hi to Michael. There's the there go. the self portrait now. Okay, there's Bella. Uh, here, this is one of my earlier paintings in 2008, and um, Rick Stitch always provided flowers and vases. And with water, of course, uh, for us to paint, and I usually abstain from this. But this one time, I felt like I should uh, paint uh, flowers in the vase, but I didn't. I only painted the stems inside the vase with the water in it, and then the actual uh, flower and the blossoms, I didn't paint. So, but I was trying to capture the different, the different uh, reflections of the of the water in the glass pitcher, and then and then the leaves which came out hanging down from the stems of the plants. But since it was also a gift to my wife Dodi, I couldn't help but painting some dolphins all around here and one dolphin is being ridden out, ridden by D-O-E-D-Y, <laughs> the spelling of my wife. So that I like the color composition very, very much. So uh, in fact, I had a friend wife's knowledge and presented it to her and she was very well received. It's beautiful, Michael. It's beautiful. I like the color. Dori and I went on a little trip in 2009 in, uh, to St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands and we observed many times birds flying about over the ocean. These are not recognizable birds by any means, but they reminded us. Uh, I painted this after the trip, after we returned from the trip, of course. Uh, they reminded us of the wonderful time we had uh, uh, on this island. Uh, oh, yeah. Every day, in the morning, we went out on a big balcony of a villa which we rented there with a full on ocean view on this island. And we saw uh, iguanas huh. uh, depicted here. And there, we called, there were two iguanas, Gracie and George. And uh, this is <laughs> how we named them. And we were very happy to see them every night, every day, and they were sitting there, but they uh, not moving anywhere at any time other than at night. But the, f uh, the flora surrounding them was indeed looking like this with mm -hmm. lots of strings and lines, and then these limbs were about the size in comparison to the uh, to the iguana. So uh, these are very uh, 
There's a red pathway, and there's a yellow tree, some rocks, and then lots and lots of leaves. And the leaves are painted as individual dots. It's not a, a painting as of uh, Impressionism. It's uh, maybe uh, Surrealism Impressionism. And I was very happy with getting the color of dark greens and yellow greens and medium greens uh, together. So. And what are the, the brown, like rocks? Yeah, they're like rocks. Okay, all right, right. nice. Are, uh, and then the trees are clear there. Okay. So now let's go to the next one. Yeah, down. This one is here. Just a study and two uh, uh, urns or faces uh, with color, and it's, it's more abstract than real, but it's good to also be interpreted as real. But I like to call them composition with two urns, mm -hmm. and I like the colors. I do too. And this one here, oh yeah, this is one of my recent ones where I want to give dark red a chance to survive. And I painted a little house here, a tree, and then the yellow leaves. So it's very, very expressive. Mm -hmm. And it's colorful, vibrant. And it gives me great pleasure. And what yeah. about the little red at the bottom with the yellow in the middle? Are those little circles with... No, they are not circles. I really wouldn't be able to tell exactly what they are. Okay. But they are... Um, they could be flowers with yellow... Yeah. Uh, yellow centers. And then this here, oh, this is one of the few manda mandalas. mandalas I took. Uh, mandalas are in circles, and I put some trees here, two trees, and a little, little tree further back, and then some leaves. I am very happy with this. Baby. That's beautiful, and look at the, how the colors are amazing on the, with the yeah. greens and the reds on the outside. And also, I think... This has some, uh, some resemblance to uh, oil paintings. Oh, there's another look. Oil paintings, but it is uh, definitely uh, aquarelle, uh, watercolor. No, that's beautiful. And what is this? Oops, upside down. Uh, oh, this. Yes, you're right. This is uh, a good eye. Happy eye. <laughs> blue, blue, blue with an iris. Blue, blue, blue and dark pupil. It's surrounded by very unobtrusive um, uh, shadings. Uh -huh. So it's, it's a study in an eye, but yeah. I think it's great. It is great with the hatch marks. Yeah. And, the and, top. and what is, oh yeah, yeah, these are just three shapes, this was done in 12 or 9, in December or 9, so we are jumping back and forth now, and uh, this is a, a vase, this is a, a triangular shape. Uh, Maybe that's a vase too. Yeah, and this is a vase too, but they have something in common that they are all standing upright, parallel to one another, and the dots are showing that it's sprinkling out. Uh -huh. And then I have some background here, as if this is a painting, 
against which they are placed. I was thinking it was a window. It could be a window. A window and, uh, you know, they're just in front of the window inside. It could be. I, I really don't remember. It's, it's now almost two years ago. Yeah. And a lot of things have gone on yes. in my mind since. <laughs> and this is here. Oh, yeah, here. This is similar to. Uh, oh, these are just two trees to displace a building. <laughs> there's powerful trees. <laughs> and then there's a house, and here it's a street. And these trees are black in trunk, but the shape of leaves are very, very happy, very powerful. And I left something uh, white in between so that it makes it more light. They are happy. Yeah, they're happy. That isn't what I thought you were going to say. Oh, it's okay. I'm too surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and here, uh, these are important. This is, again, oh, these are the, the skyscrapers in San Gimignano, next to Siena, or between Siena and Florence. And they were built in the 15th century, when every person in this town was able, was willing to impress other people with how much money they had. To Ah. built taller and taller skyscrapers, and a few of them are still standing. And again, I painted three trees and made the leaves like this way. But I have others which the show, which are currently hanging in the center, and we will look we'll at We'll look at those, tomorrow. yeah, tomorrow. This is a painting which I am very happy with. It's uh, a corgi again, which was very, very hungry. So we swallowed a little man with a huge sombrero and boots. <laughs> the sombrero became his nose and the, uh, the ring became his mouth. And then he also used the boots as his front paws. It's wonderful. I love this fiesta dog. Fiesta dog. Okay, we're going to get a little bit closer to it because it's so fun. I love the sombrero. Yes. Portrait of Monsieur Voltaire. He lived in Fernet near Geneva. And he had a house and a little monument erected in his honor across the street. So he, he was sitting in this monument, in this painting, and looking at the house. While all the way the late summer winds came up and brushed many leaves away and put many of them to the dog. I like this picture in particular because I lived in this neighborhood for five years and uh, enjoyed the hospitality and the food which you can have in this part of France and Switzerland. And is that Voltaire sitting right there? Yes, it's Voltaire. You cannot recognize this individual. In the yellow fish. chair? In the yellow chair. Okay. Looking at the source. That's I love beautiful. It. Fanny Voltaire was a very witty guy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, well, he spoke French, of course, as well as other languages. And uh, he often visited Frederick the Great in Prussia, and where they only spoke French. Just to note that the painting experience 
that you've had in the past, which I don't think was any. Was none. No. Uh, I think. And really maybe whole, talk uh, about how your brain yeah, surgery. Then, uh, when my brain surgery took place, I was uh, assaulted by the tumor on the uh, left brain. As a result of, and then when the subsequent resection of the tumor took place, I was uh, even more assaulted uh, by this intrusion of a knife cutting into my tissue on the left frontal parietal motor stock. And so the right brain went into overdrive. But at the same time, I believe that it was a motor strike, struck, which where the intrusion took place, that, uh, that the motor neurons who uh, control, uh, control the uh, functioning of the voluntary muscles, have been um, injured mm -hmm. so that they cannot connect with via the accents with the actual muscles. Mm -hmm. This is why I've been, been paralyzed on the right side mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit on the left side. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it's progressing. Uh, and I think this recognition gives physicians also the knowledge that, um, we, that we really, if they wouldn't have been so successful in making the effect of the tumor disappear, then, then I would have died earlier hmm. and would not ever have developed uh, symptoms of this new challenge. And I believe many people who are like me were given only eight uh, to nine months of survival in 2007 uh, do die at that point. Well, I was given the privilege of surviving. Mm -hmm. But as a result of which I was presented then with the additional challenge of having to deal with this motor degenerative disease where the motor neurons cannot uh, attach properly via the accents with the muscles. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the symptoms of ALS. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I am. Um, privileged to be part of this, but uh, I am also privileged to bear the burden of dealing with this, like many other people are given burdens of this or this or this side. We all have some kind of burden. And so I look at this uh, from a medical point of view in one way, and I think that's very, very interesting. But I also look at it from the uh, spiritual point of view and have gotten closer and closer to my soul as being the most important aspect and legacy I can leave to the world rather than accomplishments of my brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so, thank you, Michael, for doing this today. I well, think it's I would like to add, to add that I thank the Santa Barbara Cancer Center very much for giving me this opportunity to paint and express myself. And also that we had a wonderful leader, Rick Stitch, who encouraged me again and again and again do whatever you want to do, and you're doing fine, and uh, don't worry if this uh, 
lines are not straight, as you can see easily, but uh, let your imagination go on and don't be held back with pre-notions, mm -hmm. preconceived notions. That's wonderful. Yeah, he's, he's pretty special, and I think you did a good job of listening to his, taking his direction. You, my dear wife, you have stood with me through thin and thick and uh, uh, making it possible for me to paint these, these beauties in you and my eyes, not in everyone's eyes. And we are very, very grateful to the Council Center that they give us this and give us this opportunity to participate in the improvement of our quality of life. All right. So the ALS is kind of going down in pieces. In pieces, going down, uh, while love is streaming. And this does not necessarily mean that the ALS has disappeared for me, but in my mind, it's going away, and I fill my soul with love. Mm -hmm. The soul is much more encompassing than the mind. The mind is only the tool of the soul. And, the, and so I have proliferated from uh, using my mind, which I have abandoned, but I have proliferated from using my mind to concentrate <coughs> on my soul, which is what I will be Yeah. So that was last month, because you have on there September 2011, and today is October 9th, 2011. So these are just lips oh, yeah. of expression of joy of having arrived. <coughs> stage of uh, not being taken down by the prospect of ALS dominating me, but by being lifted up by the prospect of <coughs> the soul filled with love and the knowledge that the 
And Michael, on this, yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. This is a this is a different palette for you on this one. The reds are really dark, and the browns and the oranges. I still love the intense hues that you have, but you you it's just a little bit different palette. But I love it. It's it's not as uh, joyous as. Exuberantly joyous as his previous paintings, but it's still joyful, but more uh -huh. ex more expressive. It is expressive. And uh, this is what I want to achieve: yeah. the expression of the wish to live, and the expression of <clears throat> not giving in to complaints and uh, doing things about the situation where, which we cannot change, yeah. but accepting the situation and being very happy. Uh, well, and it's, it shows kind become. of your passion for what, and, uh, for what you believe in that. Yes, and actually uh, it's timely. Steve Jobs just died three days ago, and he was quoted in his address on uh, commencement address at uh, Stanford that he also said, this is a beautiful thing. We shouldn't be afraid of it. We should be happy that there is a cleansing process which makes room for the new ones to come up after the old ones go on. Mm -hmm. We are continually renewing ourselves mm -hmm. and he expressed it very well. He was an extraordinary person. I would like to compare myself with Steve Jobs. Oh, but I think uh, you can do that. Yeah, so. This is another painting which I did just two weeks ago. It turned out to be a portrait of my wife and me looking at one another, and we are very happy about this. You see, the, my wife is on one side, and I'm on the other side. But we are uh, very thrilled about the happiness which we can project both of us to the world. And this is what's all about. Thank you for watching.